Hey guys, back for my se the second part of my top 15 list. That was about half of them in the first list. Now let's get down to the last seven of my top 15 games of all time. Um, this is a big list, so I decided to split it up into you know, more manageable chunks. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, that I did that. Otherwise this could have been like a 30 minute clip and that is a long, long top 10 list, so our top 15 list. So there was my top, or that one was numbers, what was that, 15 through 8? Now here's for my 7 through 1. Starting with number 7, Minecraft. Where do I begin with Minecraft? Has there been a better way to waste your time than Minecraft? There's no objective, no really, nothing you can really do besides just build. You know, it's a cyclical type thing. You get, you know, stuff to build better weapons, to get more stuff, to get more, to get better items and stuff. You're really just, you know, starting at a bottom, or bottom rank, at a bottom rank, and working your way up, getting more and more, or finding really, more and more, um, items to upgrade your other items and you know you can die by starvation you can get hungry you know you can die from lava and the different textures and especially in some of the newer patches with stuff like horses and different biomes which can be actually beautiful which is it's interesting I always like watching the sunset and sunrise in Minecraft I don't, it's something nice and simple and the, when the music's playing too it's just got the most peaceful music. Um, it's honestly one of the best games I've ever played. I'm sad that, it, I mean, the fact that it's not farther up on my list just shows how good some of the, these games are. All of this, even, the, all 15 of these were super close to my top, and they could really shuffle around. Um, a lot of them could shuffle around greatly, just depending on the mood I was in when I was writing it, but I think I nailed the, these ones down. The, the lists I'm giving are the ones that I think, you know, are objectively the best and um, most of the time what I consider the best, but just sometimes, you know, it surprises you. Minecraft is would never be my number one, but it could definitely be a little bit higher on this list or a little bit lower on this list. Um, but I'm putting it at the 7 position just because it is a fun game, but there's even better yet to come. Number 6, Smite. Like I said, we're covering a lot of different types of games in here. We've had DS and um, Game Boy and, you know, GameCube, PS2, PS3 games. Now we're switching over to a PC title, one that's not even really like a game that's released on places. It's... Um, I mean, it's a video game, obviously, Smite, but it's like League of Legends, if you haven't heard of Smite. It's, um, where you, you and, well, there's different modes, but you create a profile and you get to unlock certain gods, um, of ancient history and, uh, play as them in different fights with other teams. It's a completely multiplayer-based thing no single player at all, which, you know, some people might see that as a bad thing, and that's probably why it's a little bit lower on this, a little lower on this list, is because, well, Minecraft had all single player and really no multiplayer, I mean, it kind of does, but it's hard and buggy and takes a really high computing power and a really good computer, um, Smite is all multi multiplayer, and not as much single, or no single player, really, I mean, you can do practice mode, I guess, and that's a single player, but for the most part you do it for the multiplayer mode. And um, you, you know, you play, you, you, the objective is to take down um, the titans, well depending on which mode, the normal mode, conquest mode, jazz mode, the objective is to take down the titan um, with, in a lane. There's, in conquest there's three lanes, in joust there's one lane, you have a tower, a fe and each lane consists of either one or two towers, a phoenix, and a titan. And you want to take down the titan. Um, 
and you work you do that by working with uh, up to four other people on your team. Sometimes there's only you know two or three other people on your team, but the normal modes there are the conquest mode, which is what I play the most. Is there are four other people on your team versus you. so it's five five on five five v five. There's also four v four three v three matches. And those are different modes, but the most common is five v five of you and your friends and it's one where you really have to work together. At the start, you have, you know, a minute to pick your gods, and um, you, you get into the habit as you advance on in the games um, of calling what role you're going to play in the match, either um, ADC, support, um, solo, jungle, or mid. And that just represents, you know, mid is the person who's going to be in the middle lane, jungle is the person who's going to be in the jungle between the lanes, um, Solo is going to be in the solo lane. Um, ADC and support are going to be in the duo lane. And you, know, you just have different roles. And a good team consists of each of these roles being played by someone who can play those roles. Um, uh, you know, Jack likes to just lock in whoever he feels like playing at the time and letting everyone else decide. And that's one way to go about it. And you can do that. But I find the most you win the most when you actually work with your team to get the best team together to fight. And you know you can, you can master gods and different things and unlock new ones. And it's just a really fun game that I just love to play. I've sunk hours and hours and hours into it. And matches can last from ten to ten minutes to an hour, and it gets super intense. I even watched like the, there's a. E, there's championships, and I think the world championships are actually going to be in the next couple of weeks or so. And uh, it's just, they're just so exciting to watch, personally. I, I find them exciting to watch, to see different moves and stuff that different that top players pull off. Um, but it is a really, really fun game. So now moving on, number five is Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. <coughs> I don't know what that was. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. But uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. I'll let you... I mean, I know different people like different versions of Legend of Zelda. Some people think the older ones are the best. But me, I think Skyward Sword nailed it. It took the puzzle series and made it into very, very brightly designed graphics, which, which is beautiful graphics to look at. Um, I come a long way from the you know side scrollers and the um, polygon figures and stuff like that. Sounds like just everything, but um, you know it's just an amazing um, game to play. You, know, you start in the sky, in the sky, floating sky village. And it's a prequel to all the other ones, and it kind of really sets the basis. I mean, it was the most recent one made so far. There's one coming out soon. But the fact that they did like an origin type story this late in the series and still make it good and help make sense of the rest of them was amazing. They explain, you know, why Ganondorf is a com reoccurring villain, who Link kind of is, the hero of time, the hero of, and why he's really the hero of time. Um, you know, they just. You can ride birds in here. It's just so much fun. A lot of the side quests, a lot of, and the main quests are a lot of fun. The characters are interesting. Your sword has a freaking chick that talks to you in it, and it's not as, it's not as bad as Navi. It can be pretty bad. Fi can be very, very annoying. But still, at the end, when you have to say goodbye to her, it's it it almost made me cry. To be honest, I was gonna miss that little, little blue girl, but uh, it was a very very fun game and an amazing game to watch and it actually did kind of delve deeper into the whole Zelda Link relationship because you know they've never really established that those two are a couple at all besides some of the more non-canon type things um, but at least in the video games they haven't as much um, but the it did kind of dive deeper into that and kind of set the work the basis of why, you know, Hyrule is like it is, and the different aspects of it, and that was really cool. 
close one was uh, Twilight Princess, because I really liked that. And then Wind Waker um, was also really close, because it's, it's just a fun game, too. But Skyward Sword, I mean, you'd think that the Wii Motion wouldn't be that good with it, but it actually is really, really cool with the sword fighting and stuff like that. And there's this mode where you have to, uh, or near the end, there's this part where you just have to kill tons and tons of moblins that just run up at you. And, you know, taking them all down using the moves you've learned and all that just makes you feel like a badass. And it's, it's really, really fun. So number four on this list is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, uh, this is, this is... I think one of my favorite, it's the last, uh, really, okay, it's actually not the last shooter on this list, but it is one of my favorite team shooting type things, where you're with, you know, a team against another team, you know, um, in, like, Modern Warfare, like, Call of Duty and Halo. I think this is the best out of all of them, because of the system that you win in, you know, it doesn't just depend on you, to how well you do, but depends on how well you your um, AIs do. And, um, you know, it. I, I just like the whole concept. Of how, there's tons of things spawning on this map, and tons of people, and you could be the best player out there and still get surrounded by 20 people and, you know, get taken down and stuff. But when you are surrounded by 20 people and you manage to take them all down, that's, that is one of the best feelings in the world. So, I mean, yes, um, it isn't the most, you know, doesn't look the most beautifully if you look at graphics, but it still has some beautiful moments. And for the P a PS2 game, it actually has really, really nice graphics. Um, I don't know, it's just something that I really like playing. It's a game, it has a nice single player, it's got Galactic Conquest, where you can conquer the uh, entire universe. There's the, um, so there's the Rise of the Empire, which is like the story mode. Um, you have, you know, I mean, you can play on your own against the computer, or you can play, you know, with buddies or a buddy on the same team or on different teams, which is always fun. Um, you have the, the main difference really between one and two is that they have the actual, um, heroes and villains that you can play as. Um, so you can play as Jedis, and you can play as uh, Sith, where previously you couldn't uh, in the first one, which is a lot of fun to do, um, playing as Anakin Skywalker, ch force choking people to death, or um, Palpatine lightning them, or uh, I, I personally prefer playing as Mace Windu, just because of his dual saber is just awesome and a lot of fun to just swing around. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, it's just a really fun game. And it's another one of those, it's got a lot of different maps that you can play on, a lot of different modes you could play, capture the flag with one flag or two flag, uh, conquest, which is the normal kind, assault, it's got space battles here actually too, and that's different than the first one. And they took the, what was good in the first one, they really just improved on it unlocking different characters so you can play on as later and then they have gun unlocks which is cool so after you, you try to get different achievements and once you get that achievement in a certain a certain amount of times you know you unlock um, different bonuses and stuff like uh, in my profile I've unlocked the all the different weapons and even getting those weapons is a challenge um, getting like the um, the assault rifle, which is becomes awesome, it's a three round blast that just kills enemies on one shot versus the normal one that takes a little bit. Um, you can know, upgrade a shotgun, the beam rifle, the um, rocket launcher, remote controlled rocket launcher. So it's just a fun game to play as, and the unlocks are amazing. Now, the last three on my list were really all contending for my number one spot. And it was interesting to work it out in my head, as I did. But, um, so just know that these three are some are my top, really my favorite games of all time. At different times, they were my favorite game, my number one. But 
this is how it shook out now. Uh, number three is Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. Why do I like Fire Emblem? Why wouldn't I like Fire Emblem? It's a strategic game, like chess, kind of, in a way, except the pieces move a little bit differently. But it's a strategic turn-based game where you control uh, a slew of fighters and mages and stuff, and you um, work them across the map to defeat a certain amount of enemies in a certain space. Um, I mean, and the, it's a heavily story-driven game which is amazing. The stories are always amazing, but I personally liked it in Sacred Stone because you have two of my favorite characters, er Erica and Emphrium, and I, I am still rooting for them to get pulled into a Smash Bros. brawl because they are some pretty awesome characters. Erica with her sword, and uh, Emphrium with, her, with his lance, and you know, you can make them pretty good. When I first started playing this, if the boss dies, I mean, if you're, uh, if Erica or Emphium dies, you get a game over. Other people can die, and you just continue on without them. But, uh, you wanted to keep Erica and Emphium alive, so I never let them fight. They always had to be in the story, but I'd never let them fight. I just rescued them with someone, and to make sure that they couldn't be, they couldn't fight. Um, but as I started on, I started to play with them more and let them fight more, and they became really, really good. Like, Emphrium, I got to level 20 on his Great Lord. Um, and was, he was just a badass in it. <coughs> Another one of my favorite characters you get is Murr, who's a man of Keat. That was the first time I've really ever seen or been able to play as a man of Keat, and oh, I loved it so much. With her Dragon Stone, she just wasted uh, opponents. Um, even at level one, when you first get, you get her in one of the late stages, but she gets levels up like crazy, and uh, can, you know, just become a high level really, really quickly, and she becomes extremely strong at those high levels. Um, even I mean, she's strong as at low levels too, um, taking out people's silver swords with ease and stuff like that. And the ranking system of how different um, the different weapon tiers is interesting, you know. You, you wanna, you have to be very strategic about it because you have different types of weapons. You have iron, steel, and silver types of weapons, and uh, you know iron being the weakest, but also the lightest. And then you have steel being a heavy, but also pretty strong ones. Um, and then the silver being lighter than steel, but and a lot stronger than steel, but having not that many uh, hits on there and. You had to really um, be careful with what items you give certain people because you didn't want them go blowing through too many silver swords and stuff like that because those are hard to find and expensive to find sometimes and really you just want to save your silver weapons for the, their best people and for the last levels. Um, but then you have the triangles where swords are strong against axes, axes are strong against lances, lances are strong against... Um, swords, all improving your accuracy and stuff like that. You have criticals that you can do, um, different weapons that can increase that, and different types, different uh, items to upgrade your own people, and different types of warriors that um, have the, have a advantage towards it. You know, there's lots of different types of classes. There's like 20 classes, I think, and they can be upgraded into better classes and stuff like that. And uh, it's just... One of the best games. I liked the different upgrades you could do with them, and um, who you upgraded who to was um, really interesting. It's something you play over and over and never really play it the same way. You use different characters and stuff like that. Um, it was just it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot and a lot of fun. Even after you beat the game, you can then go on to the map and just have random skirmishes. Go to different. Um, maps where it really tests your skills and your patience and how much weapons you, you uh, or what you bring along to the table and how good your characters actually are. Um, so it's by far one of the best games ever. <coughs> Izzy, no bark. No. No. Come here. Okay. Sorry about that. The number two game is... 
Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Why Skyrim? Because it is a badass game. Like I said, Jack couldn't get into it, but if you like role-playing games, it is the best role-playing game that you'll ever play, because the class system is amazing. You can really become any type of person you want, although it's a little bit preference to shield and sword, just because that's what it kind of throws at you. But you can become a mage or an archer, or a thief, or, you know, whatever type of person you want to be in it. Um, you can approach it different ways. It's very open-ended in how you complete its objectives sometimes. Um, it's awesome you can even go in guns blazing, upgrade everything so that you're one of the strongest people, don't take damage and deal out damage. Or you can be a thief or a, or a sneaky type person where you, uh, you know, sneak around and they won't be able to find you and then you just kill them from behind and they won't know what ha hit them. Or you can be a mage or archer, you kill them from a distance, stuff like that. Um, it is extremely, extremely long. Although the, um, if you just go with the story mode missions, it's not as long as you think that you've heard people say defeating the final boss was a little bit of a letdown. And there are some glitches and stuff in the um, PC version, at least, that aren't as fun that I found didn't find as in the PS3 version. Um, so that was kind of a letdown, too. But... Um, Still, there's tons of other missions, there's different guilds and stuff you can join, and do tons of different things in there, and just go around having fun. It's, I mean, unlike GTA, it actually does have consequences for messing up and breaking the law and stuff like that, but you, if you want to, you can become the most wanted outlaw in anything. <laughs> I actually became, like, the most wanted outlaw, I think, in, uh, in uh, Riften. I have such a high bounty that I literally cannot pay it off. I once had enough gold, and I tried to, and they still wouldn't accept it. They just tried to kill me just because it was so high. Um, and it was just uh, its just an amazing game uh, that I just love to play. And once you get to a high level, you, you just feel like a badass. You really feel like you are becoming stronger with each level up and each perk you decide to upgrade, um, which makes it tons of fun. You can replay it a lot, even though it takes a long time to beat. I mean, I guess after you do a lot of side quests, you just want to replay the story. You can do that with different profiles and stuff like that, which is nice. But definitely one of my favorite games. Obviously, it's on my top. I'm talking about my top list. Now, my last game, my favorite game of all time. I don't know if you saw this coming. Um, I, I've talked about it before, it's the top number one on one of my other lists. It is Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Honestly, you could not find a more perfect game for me, personally. Um, it has, you know, kind of a stealth type, um, thing. The story mode, I find it very interesting and very engrossing. I had to look up a couple things for it, but, you know, as long as you're paying attention to cutscenes, you do want to watch the cutscenes and pay attention because the story is just amazing that's really what sold it like peace walker is i think the you know it's a somewhere falls somewhere in the middle of the timeline but it's one of the later game latest games um but it also is the first one i played and uh it just at first it kind of pushed me away you know the first couple the first level was a little bit hard or interesting <coughs> but um it really took off. The um, story drew me in. I gave it a second try after. I just couldn't get the controls on. The controls are a little different than if you're used to playing, you know, shooters. They're a little bit different than what you're, you'd expect. Um, but they actually work really, really well for sneaking around. And, you know, just the style that they have for the missions, how you... Um, start a home base and you go out and select different have a mission select screen is really cool you can create your own army basically and send them out on miscellaneous missions too you can, don't have to play as snake you can play as different people except for the story missions you have to play as snake um and other things and uh different camo and stuff for different levels to make you blend in more and stuff like that um 
so that you're you don't get seen you know you get more points and stuff and the higher rank for not taking down enemies um, which can be really hard to get like a super rank on um, boss missions because you have to take them down but the point uh, where you're really just fighting groups of soldiers with a you know uh, BTR or a tank or something like that and he used to take on the tank without really harming any, any of the other soldiers so that's hard but it's just the best game of all time. Um, uh, it's my favorite, and I don't think you can find a better game anywhere else. I'm hoping, you know, that the new one will be better, but definitely, definitely my favorite game. Well, that was my list, uh, all 15 of my top games ever. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Leave, you know, tell us your favorite games leave comments below um, I want to hear from you guys I want to hear what your favorite games are what your favorite game is if you had to pick one and what do you think of my list did you like the games on my list or did you not like the games on my list you know that kind of thing uh, hopefully we'll get more videos out soon uh, until then see you later